Let's look at certain terms. Firstly, when we want to learn on hydrogen bond, you have to be very clear about electronegativity. Now, what is electronegativity? Electronegativity is a tendency of the atom to attract electron towards its nucleus. As you have learned in chapter 4 previously, so if you look at your periodic table from left to right, so towards the right, the elements are more electronegative. So among the elements towards the right, which is more electronegative, we are focusing to first three elements with the most electronegative elements. Huh? Okay, the most electronegative elements in the periodic table are nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine. So let's look at nitrogen now. What's the proton number of nitrogen? Okay, the proton number of nitrogen is 7, oxygen 8 and fluorine is 9, right? Now, based on proton number, let's do the electron arrangement. Okay, as we can see here, nitrogen, the proton number is 7, hence the electron arrangement is 2, 5. Oxygen atom, proton number is 8, thus the electron arrangement is 2, 6. Whereas for fluorine atom, the proton number is 9, hence the electron arrangement is 2, 7. Now, let's look at their valence. As you can notice here, the valence electron for nitrogen atom is 5. For it to be stable, it need to share it need to share or receive how many more electrons three electrons right so that it can be achieve a stable octet electron arrangement same goes for oxygen now oxygen the proton number is eight so electron arrangement is two six so to be stable is either need to share two electrons or receive two electrons so that it able to reach a stable octet electron arrangement. Again for fluorine, the proton number is 9, electron arrangement is 27. For it to achieve a stable octet electron arrangement, it either need to share or receive one electron. So as you can see for all these three elements, nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine, for them to reach stability, they need to receive, attract electrons towards them. So this is called electronegativity. Okay, so now we're going to look the bond between hydrogen atom and nitrogen atom. The bond form between hydrogen atom and nitrogen atom were leads to the formation of ammonia molecules. Now, let's look at the Lewis structure of ammonia molecules. Based on your understanding on covalent compounds, the formation of covalent bond of ammonia molecules, we know that one nitrogen atom will be covalently bind to three hydrogen atoms by sharing of electrons. So now, as you can see, nitrogen have five valence electron. Out of five valence electron, it contributes three for sharing with three atoms of hydrogen. In return, each hydrogen shares one electron each with one atom of nitrogen. So as you can see here, there is the electron which is not involved in the formation of covalent bond. So this is called as lone pair electrons. Lone pair electrons mean the electron which is not covalently bind. Now, the lone pair electrons electronegative, which is partially to negative charge. And in return, the hydrogen will be partially positive charge. So that means when they are sharing their electrons, the electrons will be pulled more closer to nitrogen atoms and which will cause the hydrogens to be partially positively charged. Whereas the nitrogen atom in the ammonia molecules will be negatively charged. 
So this is called as a polar molecules because of the different uh, charges of the electronegative. Okay, so now we're going to see what will happen when the two polar molecules of ammonia come in contact with. So as you can see here, this is one molecule of ammonia. This is another molecule of ammonia. So when two polar molecules of ammonia come in contact, the hydrogen atom, which are partially positively charged, will have the attraction with the other molecules. So at the other molecules, the nitrogen atom, which are more electronegative, which is negatively charged, will have the attraction with the other molecules of the hydrogen atom. So the interforce between the two molecules, that is specifically between the hydrogen atom with more electronegative atom, this is what causes hydrogen bond. Okay, so now let's look at the bond between hydrogen atom and oxygen atom. So through sharing of electrons between hydrogen and oxygen atom, they will form a water molecules. Now let's focus to the Lewis structure for the water molecules. As you can see here, oxygen, they have two pairs of lone pairs, electrons. So this oxygen is electronegative, right? So the lone pairs will cause this oxygen atom to be partially negative charge. And in return, the hydrogen will be partially positively charged. Okay, now we're going to see the interaction between two polar water molecules. So, there's an attraction will occur between the hydrogen atom from one molecule, from water molecule, to the more electronegative oxygen atom of another water molecules. The attraction that occurs between the hydrogen atom with another more electronegative atom from another molecule, this is called hydrogen bond. Okay, it seems you have already understand on the formation of hydrogen bond. So the hydrogen atom from one molecule of water molecules attracted to the more electronegative oxygen atom of another water molecules. Okay, this will cause the formation of hydrogen bond between these two molecules. So now we're going to look how about the number of hydrogen bond occurs at different state of water. And we know that all the metals exist in three different states. They are solid, liquid and gas. So now let's look at the solid form. When the matter exists in a form of solid form like now is water, is in a form of solid ice, ice cubes. So what happened to the number of hydrogen bonds? So there are many hydrogen bonds occur in solid state compared to liquid. In liquid, there will be few bonds as the molecule, the hydrogen bonds will decrease. And whereas for gas, the molecules are arranged further apart, so the force will be weaker, so there's no hydrogen bonds are formed in gas state. It seems you have understand on hydrogen bond, so now we're going to look at the what is the effect of hydrogen bond on the physical properties of substance. Question 1. Why do ammonia molecules water molecules and hydrogen fluoride molecules have abnormally high boiling point. Okay, as I have explained to you earlier, nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine are highly electronegative atoms. So when they are highly electronegative atoms in the molecules, so they have the tendency to form hydrogen bonds. And when there is more hydrogen bonds, are formed and for information the hydrogen bonds are much stronger than the van der Waals forces or intermolecular forces of attraction between the molecules. 
so more energy is needed or required to break the hydrogen bonds in ammonia molecules in water molecules and in hydrogen fluoride molecules so when more hydrogen bonds then you need more energy to overcome it so that's the reason why the covalent compounds with the hydrogen bonds in it requires higher boiling point compared to other covalent compounds okay the second effect of hydrogen bond is on the solubility for example ethanol is soluble in water is because the molecules of ethanol able to form an hydrogen bond with water molecules as you can see here see here this is the alcohol molecules huh? now the alcohol molecule at the functional group of alcohol which is OH this O is electronegative so this will be negatively partially negatively charged okay and this partially negative charge oxygen will be bound to hydrogen atom from water molecules because just now I told you already the water molecules the hydrogen part is positively partially positive charge right so the post partially positive charge hydrogen atom from water molecules will bind with the oxygen atom from alcohol so this two will form the hydrogen bond so due to the formation of hydrogen bond alcohol which is ethanol here is soluble in okay now let's look at the role of hydrogen bond in daily life firstly do you know why wet hair is sticky compared to dry hair okay the keratin layer of our hair which is the outer layer of the hair keratin molecules or polar molecules so when the hair is wet what will happen is the keratin molecules which are polar tend to form a hydrogen bond with the water molecules so when due to the existence of these hydrogen bonds between the water molecules and the keratin molecules that will result our hair become sticky whereas when the air is dry there is no hydrogen bonding when there is no hydrogen bonding then the keratin layer of hair will not be sticky so as a result the hair is not sticky second flipping the paper is easier when the fingertips are wet compared to dry fingertips right okay do you know why now let's look at the cellulose paper molecules are polar molecules so when the cellulose of the paper molecules are polar molecules when your fingertips are wet what will happen is the water molecules from your fingertips there will be a hydrogen bond will be formed eh? this hydrogen bond will be formed between the water molecules in the fingertip between the cellulose molecules from the paper so that cause the paper will be much easier to be flipped whereas when your fingertips are dry there's no water hence there's no hydrogen bonding formed cause difficult for flip the paper okay finally now why does ice floats on water now i want you to compare between these two diagrams i provided okay please look at the water molecules in a liquid state now when the water molecules in liquid state the molecules are closely together by hydrogen bond can you see the hydrogen and they are moving randomly yeah? so the arrangement is disordered pattern whereas in ice as you can see it here when the water freezes the hydrogen bonds become more strong and stable so they have space can you see the space inside here okay so they are well arranged so the volume of the ice becomes greater than that of the water so the effect of the increase in the volume of ice that is its density becomes lower than the density of water so that's why the ice become lighter than water hence the ice flows on water